This is the story of the flute maker. Long, long ago, before the time of horses, a young man named Cloud awoke beneath the branches of a cedar tree to a cool breeze touching his face. He wondered where he was and why. Then he remembered, and the pain of remembering took his breath away. Dawn Woman had told him, My father has accepted the gifts brought by Hollaharn. Hollaharn is a fine man and a good provider. He will take good care of me. Have you forgotten the promises we made to each other? He had pleaded. We were only children, she had replied. And what is the promise of a boy against the harshness of life? Cloud had watched as Dawn Woman walked away into the twilight, soon to be the wife of Hollowhorn. Driven by a cold, sickening pain, he had run until his legs lost all their strength, and he fell beneath a tree. Only with sleep did the pain go away, but now it returned like a raging storm. He lay like a stone, a blackbird alighted on a branch above him. Ants crawled over him, but he paid no heed. The wind sprang up, and only when he heard a faint, mournful voice, Cloud began to stir, and then only because the voice he heard echoed the pain in his broken heart. The voice was loud when the wind blew hard and faded when the wind went down. Cloud thought it was his own, crying out the pain in his heart. It was a hollow, haunted voice rising and floating aimlessly. He decided to find who or what was singing so sadly with the wind. Something took him to a particular old wind-bent cedar tree as a sad voice grew louder. There, halfway up, was a dead hollow branch with holes, perhaps made by woodpeckers. With each gust of wind, the branch cried sadly. Cloud had found the voice. He sat and listened. The mournful tones rose and fell with the whim of the wind. At sundown, the wind stopped, and so did the voice. Cloud climbed the old cedar and looked at the hollow branch. It was long dead, killed by worms and woodpeckers drilling for them. They had opened the holes through which the wind flowed and made the strange, sad voice. Cloud took the branch. He sat by the creek and blew through the hollow tube, but the voice didn't cry. He noticed it was not unlike the eagle bone whistle his father had given him. By placing a small piece of wood over the top hole, he was able to make sound come out of the branch. It was only noise at first, but eventually he began making it sing in much the same way the wind did. The sun went down. Cloud gathered wood and built a fire. He had no food or weapons, only a knife. If a great silver-tipped bear came or some enemy was stalking him, it didn't matter. He was already dead inside. Dawn Woman was to be the wife of Hollowhorn and bear his children. Life had no meaning. Morning found him next to cold ashes. He awoke hungry, his heart still torn. Stumbling to the creek, he washed his face, and in the water he saw a lonely young man. He stayed in that grove, blowing on the hollow branch. By sundown, he could make it sing better than the wind had. Through it came the voice of his grief-stricken heart, rising and falling with sad high and low notes. Cloud decided that the voice of the branch sounded like the great cranes. With his knife, he carved the head of the branch into the shape of a crane's head. As he made the branch sing, the birds fell silent to listen. Another night came. Another dawn found him next to cold ashes. Hunger he could push aside, but the only medicine for the pain in his heart was a singing, crying hollow branch. Since he and the wind had given the branch a voice, he called it Hokahapi, or to make a voice. It was, of course, a flute. Another day passed, Cloud blew on a flute, letting it cry for him. 
He had not eaten for three days. He was weak, and his mind played tricks. He saw a dawn woman standing in the trees. When he reached for her, she ran away. So he followed. When he couldn't find her, he simply wandered across the prairie, playing the flute, not caring where he was going. Cloud awoke to find himself next to a river. He staggered to the shade of a tree and began blowing on his flute. The sad voice flowed from it, rising, falling, sobbing, and crying out the emptiness deep in his heart. Cloud heard something and opened his eyes. He was on the riverbank near his own village. He had somehow found his way home. And then he saw the women, women from the village. They were standing on the other bank, staring and listening to him play the flute. One of them was Dawn Woman. The memory of losing her washed over him like a flood. He closed his eyes and blew on his flute. Its voice rose and fell, lilting and sighing, sobbing in soft, heartbroken notes. All the women listened as though the voice would not let them move. There was not a single man in a crowd, only old women, young women, and girls. Certain that Dawn Woman was now the wife of Hollowhorn, Cloud's grief poured out through the flute. Dawn Woman crossed the river and came to him, her eyes down. There was a time when a young man I knew made my heart fly, she said. Now he sings a strange song that makes my heart sad. Cloud stopped playing. I'm giving my pain a voice, Cloud replied, because the young woman in my heart has become the wife of another. The spirits have given me this hokarapi to do so. Can your hokarapi sing out in joy, she asked. I can give it no joy, for I do not feel it. He said. But I feel joy at your return, she told him. I know now that life's path without you would be lonely. I have taken a husband, unless it would be you. Cloud saw the truth in Dawn Woman's eyes. All he could think to do was play his flute. This time the flute song was out of hope and of joy, rising and falling like the wind, dancing across the prairies. The song of life. Once again, all the women listened, drawn to the haunting voice. The years went by. To Cloud and Dawn Woman were born two sons. He taught them to make flutes and play, and he became known far and wide as the flute maker. Young men came to Cloud and asked to learn, so he taught them all. He told them how the spirits had guided him to find the Hokarapi, taking him from the pain of a broken heart to the happiness of a dream come true. That is why, he would tell them, there will always be a hollow tone of sadness in the voice of each flute. It will remind he who plays it and she who listens that winning love is also winning the chance of a broken heart. And so, for all time, on summer evenings when the fireflies flicker in the dusk, flutes will be heard singing sweetly, sadly, up and down the river valleys, singing to touch the heart of any woman, young or old. <laughs>